Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. A very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee, and this is your EV News Daily for Thursday, 22nd of March, 2018. And just before I sat down to write today's podcast, the news came in that Tesla shareholders have approved the pay plan for Elon Musk that is worth $55 billion over the next 10 years. Well, that's the number that's been reported in the middle of what he could be worth. Let me explain this. Here in the UK, the mainstream press that just took the headlines reported that Elon's pay package is $2.6 billion. And that's what it's been nominally valued at, according to Tesla, $2.6 billion dollars as an insane amount of money. Now, Elon owns a big old chunk of Tesla thanks to his previous pay package. His previous incentive package done years ago was all about getting those products to market. And every time he did, he got the shares. And that's why he now owns such a big chunk of Tesla, because he did the job that was asked of him. So the board said, rightly, well, that incentive worked last time. Well, let's do it again. Tesla, that's worth just over 50 billion right now, has to get to 100 billion market capitalization, what the company's worth, for Elon to get the first of 12 tranches of shares. And then every 50 billion, and remember, it's only worth just over that now, but with every 50 billion increment over 100 billion, he gets another 12th of those tranches of shares, the share options, up to a total market capitalization of $650 billion. Now, if he does that, then the $2.6 billion that was reported as the nominal value, the headline figure which the newspapers have gone with, that's long distant memory. It could generate him $55 billion in a series of awards. However, that would mean his total shareholding in Tesla, though, would be up from 22% share of the company to almost 30% share of the company. And that means if Tesla is worth $650 billion, which is what it needs to do for him to get all of those awards, and he's got a 28% ownership at that point because he'll have got all 12 stock options granted because he'll have hit the financial targets, he'll have hit all the product targets that are linked to this as well, well then that market value of his shareholding would be 182 billion from being 2.6 billion the headline figure to actually 55 billion stock options if in 10 years time he achieves all of these things and Tesla really is worth 650 billion US dollars well then he would have a shareholding in the company 182 billion And that starts to put Elon Musk in the richest man on planet Earth territory. In comparison, General Motors is now worth $53 billion today. That's the size of the challenge ahead. Wow, I'm still kind of processing it myself. I need to read some proper proper car blogs that really get underneath it. Maybe listen to the Tesla Show podcast because what they do is incredible and they will decode it way better than I possibly can. Well, on with the rest of the news then, and we'll start with some good news. If you're listening in North America and wanted to drive a new VW Golf, maybe it's not good news because it would be bad news. You need to be quick to buy one. Good news is lots of people are buying uh, the new VW Golf. The bad news is they're almost sold out. According to Insight from Inside EVs, uh, sales have been so strong here in Europe that they're almost out of stock and that has kind of stuffed the rest of the world. Sorry from Europe. After all, it was the best-selling EV in Western Europe, according to Inside EV's sales scorecard. The VW chairman, Herbert Dice, 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 hmm, said our electric vehicle sales were three times more popular in 2017 than 2016 and the e-Golf is nearly sold out. It's a clear message from customers. They're willing to switch to EVs once the price is right, he says, end quote. Well, moving on, and fresh news from just a few hours ago as well. Lots going on today. BMW's annual accounts press conference. They confirmed that their next electric car will be an electric version of the X3, the iX3. Then, after that, we'll get the i4. Previously known as the iVision Dynamics, the only look we've had at it at the previous motor show, was it Frankfurt? It is pure, utterly bonkers concept car form. 
But if the production EV is even 50% uh, of how bonkers the concept car looks, it is going to be great. Now, from one pure battery electric vehicle now, one pure BEV in the guise of the i3, the i4 is going to be one of 12 battery electric models that BMW wants to have in showrooms by 2025. BMW's CEO, Harold Kreuger, uh, said that the i4 will be produced at BMW's factory in Munich where it also builds the 3 and 4 series models. There's also the electric Mini going into production in 2019, made here in the UK in Oxford, as well as Mexico, before the electric version of the X3, the iX3, is going to be unveiled this year, 2018, uh, maybe 2019, certainly available from the beginning of 2020. In 2021 will come the iNext as the innovation flag bearer, they call it. The iNext is going to be the last one in line. He wouldn't actually, the CEO wouldn't actually put a definite date on the i4 it's somewhere on that time scale but he was being wonderfully vague uh, bmw do expect by the way within three years that the pure electric range of their cars by 2021 a uh, pretty standard range is going to be 435 miles that'll be measured on wltp i imagine why would you quote the old NEDC range if you're talking about three years time so uh, 435 miles real world range according to battery packs in three years time 62 miles will be normal for plug-in hybrids to do your electric miles if you do want a plug-in hybrid auto news say that BMW has secured the naming rights obviously someone's looked into this kind of copyright thing and found out that BMW have registered i1 to i9 and ix1 to ix9 which will give you an idea about what their future cars are going to be called well, according to Fortune, VW is investing $340 million in their Chattanooga factory to build a five-seater SUV. Now at the New York International Auto Show on the 30th of March, uh, we're going to see their new SUV concept based on the MQB platform, shown off in America for the first time. Of course, that's designed for hybrid and plug-in hybrid options, as all these new platforms are. The Chattanooga uh, factory has been viewed as the likely location for Volkswagen's plan to produce electric vehicles in North America. Well, back here in the UK, the charging provider Podpoint has installed 67 charge points for Skanska, and it looks like it breaks the record for the largest installation in the country, and easily one of the largest in Europe as well. Well, it took them just two weeks to install the 7 kilowatt chargers, but here's the key detail. Obviously, the headline is they broke some records. They've included the infrastructure in the first stage of the build to add another 243 more charges if required that would be a charge point center of 310 charges in one location just for the Skanska employees to charge their cars whilst they work. Eric Fairburn, the chief exec of Podpoint, said, This is the largest single-site charge point installation that we're aware of in the UK, but also a sign of the larger shift over the past six months as more businesses wake up to the benefits of EVs. We've certainly seen a big increase in inquiries from companies wanting future-proof charge point installations uh, that can be scaled up as their fleets make the switch to electric. End quote. Well, Utility Week say that recent research commissioned by OVO energy here in the uk suggests that existing evs in the uk the ones that exist already could be contributing more than 114 megawatts to the national grid that's enough power for 300,000 homes uh, when the grid gets really thirsty between about four and seven every day and they, they need to turn up the supply as demand increases well, Hyundai will present the facelifted version of the third-gen Tucson next week, according to Car Scoops. They say on March 28th, during a press conference at the New York Auto Show, in about a week's time, seven days from now, six days from now, it'll be streamed live. The crossover slots between the Hyundai Kona and the Santa Fe Sport. It's been spied loads of times recently in prototype form with a very heavy camouflage covering its body. Hyundai has also confirmed hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions of the Tucson SUV. Another Hyundai coming with batteries. Bravo. They say the two 2019 Hyundai Kona Electric will join the other two, also in New York. So if you weren't at the Geneva Motor Show, but you're in New York, you'll see the Kona up close and personal. The zero-emission vehicle comes straight from the Geneva Motor Show, they say, where it was revealed with a 133-horsepower electric motor and a 32, uh, 39.2 
kilowatt hour battery pack that's the shorty uh, the version that version can be driven for up to 186 miles real world range the long range variant can do 292 miles they say real world range i would expect that to be low 200s when it gets cold and you're on the uh, motorways the freeways doing 70 80 mile an hour and it uses a 201 horsepower electric motor paired with a 64 kilowatt hour battery as a final note you can watch here in these press conference which starts on the march 28th at 12 45 eastern that's 5 45 p.m central european on carscoops.com a little plug for them well finally the all-new bmw 3 series has been spotted testing in the concept form and in full-on camo gear as well this car the new bmw 3 series is going to be huge for bmw they simply must get this car right it has to be a huge success they'll want audi a4 buyers to buy that instead of uh, the audi they want mercedes c series c class buyers to go for the new bmw 3 series and it's all new from the ground up it looks like a little mini 5 series it's a, in camo form all you can tell really looks great i have no doubt there's going to be strong emphasis on plugins and hybrids definitely this new bmw 3 series is going to have loads of hybrid tech it could just be right the mildest of mild mild hybrids and that is basically a 48 volt system that runs certain pumps and pulleys and systems in the engine takes the pressure off the combustion engine if you like makes it more efficient it does things like the 48 volt systems do things like spool up the turbo so the engine doesn't need to do that all of these things make those petrol engines more efficient and you can still call them a hybrid look anything which gets the co2 down is good and it's important for those European automakers to get below the new standards in 2020 or they'll face big fines from the EU. Okay, let's do one more story. Since the first version of the Ford Focus Energy in 2013, not much has really happened on their electric front. Well, nothing has really happened apart from lots of announcements from Ford saying that they're going to be a world leader in electric cars. Uh, now they're updating it for the 2019 model year, which includes a new hybrid and a new plug-in hybrid, the Fusion Energy. The only plug-in Ford sell now, after the C-Max Energy is no more, gets a very tiny battery bump from 7.6 kilowatt hours to a heady 7.9 kilowatt hours. It sits in the same space. Sorry, I'm not laughing. It sits in the same space as before, uh, uh, but they've squeezed a little bit more in. Look, considering other automakers like Renault have done the same, but with much bigger battery increases, like the new Leaf, exactly the same size and shape uh, of the old battery, but with more density, or the new Zoe Z40. Look, we know the technology exists out there, Ford need to get their hands on it. It has an EPA range of 25 electric miles. Don't use them all at once, will you? I'd love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can, share the podcast with somebody interested. Listen to every previous episode of the podcast online. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, now tune in, and the blog, evnewsdaily.com. You can subscribe for free. If you want to do that now, it would take your mind off remembering to do it. It means you get every new episode episode first and free uh, if you can rate and review anywhere you get the podcast uh, i would love you forever if you did that and if you have an amazon echo get the new skill search ev news daily in your alexa app or your amazon prime app and then you can have us as a flash briefing on twitter at ev news daily have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow <laughs>